So apparently some Republicans are mad at Taylor Swift for the most Republican reason ever. What did she do exactly? Well, she had the audacity to dare to encourage her young, impressionable fans to vote. And worse, she told them how to vote, where to register, to be exact. Can you believe her? I can't believe that she would do this. As a, as a Swifty myself, I've got to say, I feel betrayed. Now, obviously, I'm being sarcastic, but I don't think that my sarcasm adequately conveys how insane this response is. Now, the controversy all stemmed from this one Instagram post she made where she asks her fans, are you registered to vote yet? I've been so lucky to see so many of you guys at my U.S. shows recently. I've heard you raise your voices and I know how powerful they are. Make sure you're ready to use them in our elections this year. Register to vote in less than two minutes at vote.org slash NVRD. Now, even though Republicans weren't too happy about that recommendation, and I'll tell you why in a moment, the response from her fans was overwhelming to say the least. Vote.org tweeted that they saw a 1,226% spike in web traffic an hour after she made that post. And on top of that, as Teen Vogue explains, Vote.org wrote in a statement that 35,252 new voters registered that same day the most since 2020, and a 23% boost from last year. The site also saw a 72% jump in the number of 18-year-olds registering compared to last year. Wow. So if you know anything about Republicans, you can see why that enraged them. With a single Instagram post, Taylor Swift was able to register thousands of new disproportionately young people to vote. And if the last two elections taught us anything, it's that young people participating in these elections is very bad news for Republicans. So predictably, they were outraged over this. And rather than trying to create their own get out the vote movement for Republicans, well, they just proceeded to attack Taylor Swift for daring to do this. Now, there were a lot of no-name conservatives who spoke out against her. They had, you know, small accounts, and we'll get to them in a moment here. But what I really want to focus on are the prominent haters of Taylor Swift, namely Sean Davis, who's the CEO of the Federalist Society, who tweeted, Taylor Swift is dumb and her music sucks in response. And he also linked to an article from September 5th titled, Taylor Swift's popularity is a sign of societal decline, hyperbolic much. And if you look at the article, it is an unnecessarily long article about things that he doesn't like about her. Basically, he thinks that she's a narcissist and her lyrics are bad and he doesn't understand why she's so popular but i mean you could have saved yourself so much time saved so many characters if you just didn't write that article and you just tweeted her music isn't for me i don't get it that's fine but we all know that the reason why he reshared his shitty article is because he's butthurt that she registered people to vote which again is bad news for republicans but i don't know why he thought this would be a good idea but he tweeted this out and then proceeded to get dragged by Taylor Swift fans. I don't know if that was the response that he was expecting. Because, I mean, sure, certainly Republicans chimed in agreeing with what he said. But for the most part, they roasted the shit out of him for daring to attack Taylor Swift. And not only just attack her, but attack her for the dumbest reason imaginable. So this person responded saying, I'm sorry this happened to you, Lamau. This person just responded with a picture of him, which is surprisingly devastating when you, when you see when you see uh you know what he looks like he's definitely a conservative dweeb this person says ugly mfers can't relate to taylor it's okay dude stick to oliver anthony he's more your speed this person just says shut up nerd and my favorite we encourage republicans to continue picking these loser fights with cultural icons like taylor swift disney bud light exactly yeah and that's a really great point because republicans constantly by declaring every everything woke or liberal or whatever, they end up hurting themselves inadvertently because they don't realize that these cultural institutions in the United States are institutions for a reason. Lots of people love them. And especially when you're going after a pop star, I just feel like you're asking for a lot of people to shit on you, right? And you're not even critiquing her substantively, right? This isn't a 
type of critique of music that you see from Anthony Fantano. His article was trash. Now, admittedly, I did not read the whole thing, but I read several paragraphs and considered quoting him in this video, but it's really unnecessary. He's just an out-of-touch dude who doesn't like the music, which is fine, but when you unnecessarily attack someone and it feels like you are just butthurt because she encouraged people to vote, people are going to call you out for that. Now, there's a lot more criticisms of him, but to be clear, that wasn't the universal response. There were many Republicans, or I should say uh, seeming Republicans who chimed in in, and they also were not happy with what Taylor Swift did, which, again, was just encourage people to fucking vote for Christ's sake. So this person quote tweeted the article saying, a more vacuous person you'll not find. If she leads prepubescent young girls deeper into ignorance, that is on the parents. The parents who are Swifties should not be issued any government docs higher than fishing licenses. Yeah, very normal response here from a grown man. Uh, you also had a couple of quote tweets from Blue Checks not understanding why she's as popular as she is. And I'm sorry, but that sounds like cope to me. If somebody says or does something politically that you don't like and you bring in non-germane reasons to attack them, like saying she doesn't have talent or she's overexposed, I just feel like that's... That's cope. I mean, I don't like Chris Pratt in particular. I think his politics are indeed dog shit. But if I were to bring in how I think he's not talented or not funny, then that would feel like cope. You you know that that would sound like cope because I think that he is a fairly decent actor. I mean, sure, he gets too many roles now and he kind of plays the same character. But if I'm saying that within the context of criticizing him for a political view that he has, then, you know, it, it feels a little bit copy, does it not? You all know it sounds copy. Uh, but the real reason why they don't like her all of a sudden is because she was able to galvanize her fans. And that is a real threat to Republican power. And we know this because it's not the first time that they attacked her for this. So believe it or not, back in 2018, Taylor Swift was involved in another quote unquote scandal where she endorsed a Democrat on Instagram and also registered 65,000 new voters in a single day, leading to conservative meltdowns back then as well. The American Independent wrote, Turning Point USA Executive Director Charlie Kirk seemed to be especially crushed by Swift's endorsement, taking to Twitter for an extended public meltdown on the subject, claiming the global superstar had no idea of what she was talking about. He then continued his whining on Fox News and Fox business where he bitterly denounced the singer as a know-nothing charlatan. Yeah, that's ironic coming from Charlie Kirk of all people, but it wasn't just him who was sounding off at the time after she registered tens of thousands of new people to vote. The National Republican Senate Committee literally issued a statement about this, condemning her, saying, if you haven't heard, multimillionaire pop star Taylor Swift came down from her ivory tower to tell hardworking Tennesseans to vote for Phil Bredesen. Yes, because the party who voted to cut the taxes of multimillionaires just like her a year earlier definitely care about the hardworking people of Tennessee. Give me a fucking break. But here's what I want to make very clear. This really is not about Taylor Swift, right? Even though conservatives already may not like her because she's a vocally liberal pop star, they're going after any and everyone who dares to try to expand the voting electorate, right? Anyone who's able to register, actually register large swaths of people to vote is going to be their target. It's not just her, it's Stacey Abrams, it's any other organization that's effective at mobilizing people. Because democracy itself is the biggest obstacle to Republican power, and by expanding the electorate, Taylor Swift has proven that she's an actual threat to the GOP's power. But she's not alone, because Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro announced automatic voter registration in his state, meaning that anyone who obtains a driver's license or ID card will automatically be registered to vote. Now, Republicans immediately condemned this move. Trump called it a disaster for the election of the Republican Party and said that, quote, it must be met harshly by Republican leadership. And also, former Trump administration official and white nationalist Stephen Miller suggested that it was a ploy to allow undocumented immigrants to vote. Now, he knows knows that that's not true. But regardless, these are things that they say because they don't want to just come out and say, we really don't want more people voting because they're probably going to vote for Democrats and not Republicans. But in an interview with CNN, the governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, responded to that criticism and he shut it down. You mentioned what the DMV or what checks there are, right, from the DMV, et cetera. I just was wondering if you could please respond directly to Stephen Miller, former Donald Trump aide, who, who tweeted this, I can promise you there will be no citizenship verification. Just want to give you a chance to respond directly to that. Yeah. 
<laughs> Look, I'm not going to respond to Stephen Miller. That guy's a dope who can't tell the yeah, truth. Yeah, I'm not asking you Here's about Stephen Miller, Governor, but just, just about what he raises, because I think he raises a question others may raise. So just to the to the substance of what he said. Right. Right. Well, he doesn't raise any substance. Here is the actual substance. When you go to get a driver's license, when you go to renew your driver's license, you have to bring identifying documents mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to secure that driver's license. The same documents that are required in order to be able to register to vote. We're relying on a system that already has safeguards built into it to allow someone to be automatically registered to vote. Listen, Poppy, I went to court more than 40 times to defeat people like Stephen Miller and others who tried to thwart the will of the people here in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, who made up all kinds of ridiculous claims after the 2020 election. And I won every single time in court and defended the will of the people here in Pennsylvania, defended the right to vote. And mm -hmm. here in Pennsylvania, we value our freedom, we value our democracy, and voting is central to that. And now it's easier for eligible voters to have their yeah. voices heard I, here in the comments. And I think that's yep. He is exactly correct. In Oregon, we have automatic voter registration, and guess what? There's no fraud, right? We've also had mail-in voting for decades, and it's not controversial. It's not a partisan issue here. Both Republicans and Democrats enjoy it because it makes it a lot easier for all of us to vote. This isn't just automatic voter registration for Democrats. It's automatic voter, voter registration for everyone, regardless of party affiliation. So you'd think that the GOP should be in support of this in theory, right? But they're not. And the reason why they have to lie and pretend as if these changes will lead to fraud when that's not true is because they don't want to have to admit the real reason why they don't want more people voting. It's simple. More people voting means more Republicans lose elections. They rely on low voter turnout where the same older, loyal base of Republican evangelicals reliably show up to vote for them every single year without offering no new policies, without trying to expand their electorate. And that's worked for them. So more people voting is going to make it more difficult for them to win elections because that's more people who they have to win over that they can't win over. And when more people show up to vote, they often lose. They know this. Everyone knows this. I mean, if every single person in this country voted in every single election going forward, Republicans would never win another election again. Right. And that's because most Americans don't agree with this party, even though they represent one of two major political parties in this country. They're still a minority po uh, party when it comes to policy, meaning that the overwhelming majority of Americans do not agree with the policies they're, that they're putting forward. So this is why they're fighting against these efforts so much. It's also why. They're trying to suppress the vote in certain states by disenfranchising voters and removing polling places in districts with people of color, mostly, who typically vote Democrat. It's why they gerrymander so explicitly and even racially. They don't want more people voting because they'll lose elections this way. That's what you have to keep in mind. But they can't say that. So people like Stephen Miller and Donald Trump have to pretend like fraud is their main concern or non-citizens voting is a concern when in actuality they know that that's bullshit. But as the party grows increasingly fascistic and authoritarian, some of them are just admitting it, that they're against voting rights. Take Matt Walsh, for example. The, the, these people should not be allowed to vote. I mean, you hear people say that in a half-joking way. Oh, I can't believe these people can vote. But, but really, they shouldn't be able to. Like, actually, they should not be able to vote. That should be something that we, that, that becomes a serious topic of conversation. OK, like the kind of thing that comes up on presidential debates. OK, like an issue that political parties have to deal with in their platforms. We should really be talking about this. That there are a lot of people who are voting in this country who should not have that right. They don't deserve it. And as I've tried to explain many times, the right to vote, it is not a God-given right guaranteed to everybody regardless of anything it's not okay it, 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 it's not it's not fundamental to your human nature that you automatically are entitled to um have a say over the you know political system in your country it's not there, there are some basic guidelines that should be in place you should you should have to earn that right not everybody should have it 
And it is so incredibly obvious that, are, that if you are an absolute oblivious moron who knows nothing about your own country or the political or the, or, or the, the government uh, that runs it, then you shouldn't have any say over it. You just heard one of the most popular right wing pundits say the quiet part loud. And he is not the only one. Vivek Ramaswamy, a GOP presidential candidate, has proposed raising the voting age to 25. Now, again, this is because they know that if more people vote, especially young people, Republicans are going to have a very difficult time winning elections. So that's why Republicans are attacking Taylor Swift. But unfortunately for them, going after one of the biggest pop stars in the world isn't going to do them any favors. So I would highly, highly encourage them to keep this up because if they thought that lefties were ruthless, well, wait until they get a taste of Swifties because they seem absolutely ruthless and they will fucking drag anyone who dares come after their queen.